Yo what's going on guys Tanmay of Simple Snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on operations research especially the network analysis port and cpm sub topic so in the previous video of this operations research playlist we took a very brief introduction to what is network analysis what is a network diagram we saw what is a project what are the different activities and what exactly is a project and we also took an example we saw a very basic network diagram but then in that video i did not take a detailed look at the network diagram we just simply took a numerical and converted it into a network diagram because i just wanted to show you practically how it looks like when it comes to network analysis now in this video what we are going to do is we are going to take a detailed look at what is exactly a network diagram so we'll first go through a little bit of theory on network diagram and then we'll jump to a numerical example if you already know what a network diagram is and all the different concepts and terms used in network diagram you can skip to the direct numerical you can see the time code on the screen but it will hardly take 2 minutes of your time and then we'll also see some common mistakes that we do when you are solving network diagram related numericals so starting off with some concepts based on network diagram so we have activity so activity represents some action that consumes both time and resources now activity is represented by an arrow so as you can see in the screen this yellow arrow is an activity it can be an operation a task inspection work anything that consumes time as well as resources now each activity has a start and end time in the project timeline the second thing comes is event or a node so these blue circles are basically events or also known as nodes and an event represents the start and end of an activity and it itself does not consume any time you can just say that it is one state to another state so whenever you perform an activity you transition from one node that is one event or one state to second state or second event or second node okay now multiple activities can start from a single event so you can have one more arrow over here and we can start another activity so that is also possible and an event is not completed until all the activities coming to it are completed so this event too will not be completed until and unless this activity is completed which is coming to it or if there is any more activity which is coming to it both of them have to be completed for this event to be completed okay so it makes sense right so then we have something which is known as predecessor activity so activity that must be completed before one or more activity starts is known as predecessor activity so on the screen if you can see that this is one activity then this activity can only be completed when a predecessor activity which is an activity which is required first is completed so this is actually a predecessor activity okay so in the previous video also wherein we took an example of what a project is and what are the tasks involved in a project we saw that the tasks are usually allotted in a particular chronological order wherein you have to follow a particular order itself and you have to stick to that order because you cannot complete one task if it is dependent on some other task so it has to be first completed right so there is predecessor concept there is successor activity concept so activity which starts immediately after one or more activity is completed is known as successor activity so that's what you can see so so if this is one activity and this is another activity so this is a successor activity please ignore my handwriting so the activity that starts immediately after an activity ends is known as successor activity and then lastly we have the concept of dummy activity so an activity that does not consume any time or resources is known as dummy activity and it is represented by a dotted line so this is that dummy activity being represented in this diagram and it still must follow all the rules applied to a normal activity however a dummy activity is required when two or more parallel activities in a project have the same start and end events or two or more activities have some of their intermediate predecessor activities in common now these two points will not make a lot of sense because until and unless you actually see a numerical which requires dummy activity you will not be cleared with this idea so now let's move on to some common errors that we as students make when we are going to be solving numericals based on network diagram so the first mistake is a looping mistake so making an endless loop in a diagram is not allowed so you can see we have a loop over here so we have 3 to 1 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 so these activities are basically going in a loop and this is something that is not allowed the second mistake is a dangling event wherein you are not supposed to let an event stay dangling or disconnected you can see we have a disconnected event in the node so you have 1 2 then we have 2 to 3 and then this 3 is left disconnected which means that it is not involved in any other activities so this is something that we cannot do we have to have a connected graph so somewhere it has to connect again over here also 6 is left disconnected we have to connect it the third one is redundancy wherein we are using unnecessary dummy activities so we have 1 2 3 4 and 5 so we created this three event unnecessarily and these two dummy activities unnecessarily if we can avoid it we should completely exclude it so we have 1 2 3 and 
And lastly, we have some miscellaneous mistakes that we do. So when you are drawing network diagram, you should start from the left to right. So if you are going in this direction, you should not come back. Okay. So this is something that is wrong. You should always go ahead. So this is right. And then one more thing is you should try to have a closed graph. So as I mentioned, if you have a dangling event over here after this activity, you have to connect it. It's not compulsory over here that you will not lose marks, but typically it is supposed to be connected. You can also leave it as it is. This is not mandatory. So take a look at these four mistakes, common mistakes or common errors that we as students do when we are solving numericals. And now let's actually move on to a numerical which is based on network diagram. Okay, so we've been given a question, generate the network diagram for the following data. And we have two columns. One is the activities. So we have A, B, C, D till H. And we have the predecessor activities. Now, as I mentioned, predecessor activities are activities which need to be first completed. And only after them, the respective activities can be started off. So you can see for first A and B, we have no predecessor activities, which means that A and B can directly start off. So let's start off with the network diagram. I'm going to draw a circle. This is a node or an event you can say. And we can see that A and B can immediately start off because they don't have any predecessors over here. So I'm going to do one activity for A and I'm going to do one activity for B. Okay. So both of them started off immediately and this is also possible. You can have multiple activities starting off from one node. Now moving ahead, you can see that we have one more activity C. Now for C, A is mandatory. So let's first draw two nodes over here because after performing A and B activity, we reach at two different nodes. By the way, numbering these nodes is not compulsory. I usually leave it as it is because it sometimes confuses us and it is a little confusing. You don't have to actually number it. You can leave this as it is. So coming to this activity that is C. So C requires A to happen. So A has happened over here and we have reached this node. So only after this node, we can start off C. So I'm going to do this and see this is C. But now you can see when we move to D, Again, D also requires A to happen, right? So we can start off D over here only. I'm going to say this is D. And the reason why I started off D from this node itself is because for completing D activity, we need to first complete A. So that is the predecessor. So you can see over here. So for C and D, A is the predecessor. So after A, you can perform C and D. Okay, so moving on to E. Now for E to happen, B has to have already happened, right? So you can see B activity has happened over here and we've reached this point. So if you want to perform E, you can start it from over here and this is going to be called as E. So predecessor of E is B. That is what is given over here. Similarly, for F to happen, again, predecessor is B, right? So I'm just going to erase this and write E over here. And I'm going to start F also from here. And this is how it looks like. By the way, I forgot to mention, if you are drawing this network diagram for the first time, I would recommend that you draw it with a pencil because a lot of times you do make mistakes in this diagram. Okay, so we have done with A, B, C, D, E. We also completed F. Now we are remaining with G and H. But now if you observe for G, two activities have to be completed and the two activities are D and E. So after D, we came to this node. After E, we came to this node. So we have two different nodes over here or two different events. So this is not something we want. We want to achieve one single event and only after that one single event is reached, we can perform G. So this is why I was telling you to draw it with pencil. What we can do is we can connect one of this activity to one particular event. So what I'll do is I'll just erase this entire E and I can connect this to this one single event and I just name it as E again. So what we did is we just connected D and E to one single event so that we can perform G now. Okay. So now I can draw G also. Because G requires D and E to happen simultaneously. So we are done with G and now we are reaching H. Now again we can see that H requires F and G. So this is G and after G we will reach to particular event. And after performing F we reach to this event. So again these are two different events and this is not something what we want. We want them to have one single event. So two activities should come in at one single event so we can join them. So again I am just going to erase this F because what I can do is. I can start this F from here only, but I have to connect it to one single event where G also comes. So this is going to be G and F. And once G and F meet at one single point, I can perform H also. So after this, I can perform H and we basically completed our network diagram. So even this activity is done. Okay, so we've constructed all our activities with the necessary predecessors. And this is how our network diagram looks like. I hope you got the point wherein we had to connect two different 
activities at one single node so that we can perform the successor activity. So for some activities, you can see we, we have only one predecessor. For some, we actually don't even have any predecessor. So we directly started them off. But for some, we have two different activities. So we have to combine them and bring them at one single node. And only then we can perform that activity. Now in this specific numerical, we actually did not have any dummy activity. So a dummy activity, we would represent it by a dotted line and a dotted orange line. In the next video, we'll see a numerical wherein we'll actually use a dummy activity because this was a very simple example that I wanted to show you. In the next video, we'll directly jump to the numerical and we'll solve more than one numerical for better practice. Okay, so that's it for this video, guys. I hope you understood what is a network diagram, what are the terms and concepts involved in network diagram and what are the common errors. And then we also saw a practical numerical example on network diagrams. So that's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Do share it with your friends. And if you haven't yet subscribed on this channel, make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever I upload a next video. So thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Peace.